Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the difference between the PoE++ injector and PoE++ switch. This is the PoE++ switch, this is the PoE++ injector. Both equipment is, has implemented the latest PoE standard IEEE AO2.3BT. It can output 90 watts through single PoE port. The standard PoE only output 30 watt. The secret this new PoE standard can output 90 watt is because it's taking all four twist pairs in the K5 or K6 Ethernet cable to send the power. There are totally four twist pair. In the old PoE standard, it only takes half of twist pair to send the power. In the new PoE standard, it will take all four twist pair so it can increase the power budget from 30 watt to 90 watt. It's a lot of power. So we can use this PoE, new PoE switch uh, injector to power the IP camera with a heater built in. The heater requires more power. Or this Wi-Fi 6 access point or the all-in-one computer, even some special application like the PoE power switch, another switch. And now let's go back to the topic and see what's the difference between these two. This is the 4-port PoE++ switch, but only port 1 and port 2 can output 90 watt. Port 3 and port 4 just output the 30 watt like the regular PoE. This is the uplink port. This is the PoE injector. We got two RJ4 wide network port, uh, but only port, one of the port can output 90 watt PoE. The other port is supposed to link to the router or another network switch to get the data. You can see when we put these two get together, actually this one just, this one PoE switch just like two PoE injectors because we could have two PoE port output 90 watt. So simply if you have more than one high power equipment, you can choose this PoE switch because it can output two PoE, high, high power PoE. Okay, now let's look back. If we go back, we can see the power source is being built into this PoE injector. We can connect this PoE injector to AC power outlet directory. Use the AC power cook. And this is the PoE switch. And we need to use the external power supply unit. The power supply is not built in. It needs to work with this 180 watt power supply unit. Why we separate the power from the inside? The reason is because this high power supply unit, it will create a heat. It will convert the AC power to the DC. Eventually, it will work with the DC, right? It's safety power. But when the conversion between AC to DC, there always has a power loss. It will create a heat and make the whole case very hot. In that case, if we just try to build this high power 180 watt power, but uh, power supply to this case, we need to make the case very large. Otherwise, the user life for this PoE switch will become short. That's the reason why we need to use the external power supply unit. Okay, now let's just make a quick setup. Uh, I will use this small camera. Can we use this high power injector switch to work with this small camera? Because the camera doesn't, that, it doesn't need the high power, neither 30 watt or 90 watt. It just need less than 10 watt. Don't worry, it will be safe. The reason is because in the standard PoE, there always has the power hand shaking. Before the PoE injector or PoE switch send the power to the edge device, it will classify, edge device, uh, classify the edge device and determine what is the maximum power budget it needs to send. This camera is only compatible with the PoE Plus. So the maximum power budget from these two equipment, it will send just 30 watts. By the way, you can even connect the non-PO equipment like the PC computer to this standard PO equipment because they would know it doesn't need to send the power, it just will provide the data. Okay, first let's just work with the PO injector. Like what I mentioned before, we need to connect the PoE port to the edge device and it will supply the power. Okay, meanwhile, let's just power up this PO injector using the AC power code. The second thing is we use the short punch code to link the data port to one of the data port of the router. It will take a while before the camera boosts up. I can hear the camera boost up. Now this is camera's life now. It's a motorized zoom camera. It needs to zoom in and zoom out to find the best focus. It will take a while. Yes, it's, it's live now. Okay. I'm going to disconnect the PoE injector and replace with this PoE switch. 
Okay, first let me just remove the PL inject. I also need, okay, I think I, I, think I need to connect this power adapter to supply the power for this PL switch. And then connect this large power supply unit to the AC power let. Let's connect the cable to the port number one. And you can see the indicator is on, which means the switch is supplying the power and with the data is changed to the camera. Now let's connect the router to the outlet port. Actually, we can connect to either of these port. Remember I mentioned they always has power handshaking. We can connect the non-PoE equipment to the PoE switch or PoE injector. It's safe. I think the camera's live now. Yes, it's live. We will work with the PoE++ switch. It can supply up to two high power e equipment. The port one and port two can output 90 watt. And the PoE injector only can supply one high power PoE equipment. So if you have a second PoE equipment, you probably need to have a second PoE injector. Just one last thing. You see, in this case, the PoE++ switch is set the PoE lean to 30 watt. So that means if your equipment doesn't support high power, you don't get the high power, even you use the high power PoE injector or PoE switch. So what is the possible workaround? If you need the high power, but your equipment doesn't support PoE or PoE plus, plus, then you can use this high power PoE splitter. This PoE splitter is supposed to stay next to your equipment. It will take the input from the PoE switch or PoE injector. Then it will separate the power from the data. Then you got the one port for the data, another port for the power output. All right, that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.